Okay, so here's a quick tutorial introducing you to what a normal distribution is. Before I can teach you about a normal distribution, you have to remember what a histogram is. Now, I'm not going to go into too much detail about histograms. If you want a reminder about what histograms are, how to make them, um, go back and watch the tutorial I posted about um, how to make a histogram. So just a quick, quick reminder about a histogram here. Um, I've got just a brief example. Um, basically, Marlon, um, his grade 9 math class, was challenged to guess his height in centimeters. So the 30 students in his class guessed Marlon's height, and here's the data um, that was recorded based on his classmates' estimates of his height. So there's different ways to display this data, but because it's continuous data, one appropriate way to display this would be using a histogram. Now, if I was to make a histogram, what my histogram would look like based on this data would be this right here. So just a quick, some quick reminders about what some key properties of this histogram. Um, the x-axis is going to be divided up into intervals. Now there's a specific way for how I chose these intervals, how I chose um, this bar to be the interval between 158.5 and 166.5. Um, if you want, go back and watch that tutorial on histograms to, to remind you how to do that. But basically that interval, the bar between those interval boundaries, this bar right here, um, the height of that bar will tell me the frequency or the number of people who guessed that his height was between 158.5 and 166.5. This bar right here, this tallest bar, tells me that 14, yep, 14 people thought that his height was between 182.5 and 190.5 centimeters. So keep in mind, the height of the bar always represents the frequency associated. So y-axis is always the frequency, the frequency associated with each interval. Okay. On the x-axis always goes your independent variable. In this case, it was the height of Marlin y-axis always frequency. Now, not only have we talked about how to make a histogram, but we've also talked about different shapes of histograms, the shapes they take. Now, the normal distribution always ends up looking like it is mound shaped. And I'll talk more about that as we go through this. Um, basically, if, so we had 30 students guessing Marlon's height in the original example. If 120 more people guessed his height, What's going to happen is the distribution is now going to look like this, okay? This is a graph where we now have 120 more people um, had guessed his height. So our sample size is growing. If I was to draw a smooth curve through the tops of each of the bars, you're going to notice it's starting to look, it's starting to look mound shaped, the right side especially. You're going to notice like the mean and mode are both in the middle of this distribution. So it's starting to look very mound shaped. If we were to if we were to get even more people to guess and if we were to make our intervals small enough, okay, if we were to make them small enough, we had enough people guessing, the distribution would become symmetrical and it would become perfectly mound shaped. When I say perfectly mound shaped, I mean it would look exactly like this thing here. Okay? If I was to draw a smooth curve atop all of the bars, it would look perfectly mound shaped, perfectly symmetrical, with the mean median mode all being in the middle. Okay? Now that's what we call when it's perfectly mound shaped, we say that the data has formed a normal distribution. Now when I say normal distribution, I need to explain to you what I mean when I say normal. So what does normal mean? So a normal distribution has the following properties. Okay, A normal distribution, um, so basically if we were to make a histogram of the data for a certain variable, um, it, would be, it would form a normal distribution, the data would be normally distributed if. Okay, So here's a set of criteria. If it was normally distributed, it would be symmetrical. Okay, The mean, median, and mode are all equal, and they'd all fall down the line of symmetry. So in this example here, the mean, median, and mode would always be would all be right down the middle here. Okay, That would be the spot for the mean, the median, and the mode. It would be right down the, um, the line of symmetry, right in the middle of the distribution. It's shaped like a bell, or mound-shaped if you want, peaking in the middle and then sloping down towards the sides, and if we look at the graph, as it goes down to the left, it starts approaching a frequency of zero, and same when it goes down to the right. So it approaches zero at the extremes. Okay, here's some important properties of a normal distribution that I'm going to put in here that you're going to have to remember. Approximately 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean. So there's some words in there, mean and standard deviation, that you're going to have to know from earlier in this chapter. 
Okay, so mean is basically the average of the set of data, and a standard deviation is a way of describing the, the dispersion of the data or the spread of the data. So on average, how far are the data points away from the mean? So that's the standard deviation of the data. <clears throat> also, approximately 95% of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. So when I say within two standard deviations, I can mean I mean 95% of the data is even is either two standard deviations greater than or sorry, within two standard deviations greater than and within two standard deviations less than the mean. And I'll show you a diagram on the next slide that'll ho hopefully clear that up for you. And lastly, approximately 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So almost all of the data is within three standard deviations of the mean. So if the data is normally distributed, those are properties of the data. <clears throat> here's a graph that shows you those percentages maybe a little more clearly. So here's the graph of a normal distribution. So we have our independent variable on the x-axis. You'll notice right in the middle is our x-bar. x-bar, remember, means the average or the mean of the data. That's right in the middle. Okay, It's right in the middle, right with the mode and the median. Now, as we go to the right, this next point that we have plotted here, it's x plus one, x bar plus one standard deviation. That means one standard deviation greater than the mean. To this side, the next point plotted is one standard deviation less than the mean. Within one standard deviation, so within one great one standard deviation greater and one standard deviation less than the mean, falls 68% of the data. So within here is 68% of the data. And that's divided up evenly into 34% and 34%. Okay? Within two standard deviations of the data, so within two standard deviations less than and two standard deviations more than the mean of the data, falls 95% of the data. And here's the 99.7 within three standard deviations of the data. Now, what you might be trying to do now, um, keep in mind these values here are the values on the inside of the graph here, they've been rounded, okay? Like this 34% has been rounded. 30, so it's actually 34.0 some, something percent of data um, is between the mean and one standard deviation less than the mean, okay? But they've been rounded to make the diagram a little easier to read. So if you were to try to add up all these values, like 2.25 plus 13.5 plus 34 plus 34 plus 13.5 plus 2.25, it's not going to add up to 99.7. It's going to be very close, but it won't add up exactly because those values inside have been rounded. But um, for now, these values are going to be very important for us to remember. You're going to have to remember, especially these values up top here. Remember these for sure. 68% within one standard deviation, 95% within two standard deviations of the mean, and 99.7% of the data will be within three standard deviations of the mean if the data um, is normally distributed. So that's important to remember. Um, as we um, as we progress through this chapter, you're going to learn um, uh, more precise and exact ways to determine, uh, you know, what percent of data is within a given interval. Um, but for now, we're going to use these rounded um, these rounded values that we have in our diagram here. Here's just another diagram showing. It's actually a diagram of the standard normal distribution. But don't worry about what I just said there until we get to the next lesson. Um, it's once again, just showing you, you know, that 68% of the data is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95% of the data is within two standard deviations, and 99.7 is within three standard deviations of the mean. Um, another thing, note, I like this diagram because it also reminds you that um, there is some data outside of three standard deviations of the mean. If 99.7% of the data is within three standard deviations, that means 0.3% of the data is outside of or beyond three standard deviations of the mean. So that's going to be divided evenly. So 0.15% is going to be less, it's going to be more than three standard deviations less than the mean. And 0.15% is going to be more than three standard deviations more than the mean. So don't forget about those, um, that small percentage of data that is outside of three standard deviations of the mean. <clears throat> so, you might have noticed on the last couple slides, there's been this notation that I haven't really talked about. So I'm going to clarify what all those letters in that notation means. So, at the beginning here, if you see this notation, 
you see this. This means that the data forms a normal distribution with a mean of whatever number is there and a variance of whatever number is here. Now, you probably haven't heard me say the word variance that I've been talking about standard deviation. In the notation, it always writes the variance, which is simply just the standard deviation squared. Um, variance is just another way of describing the, the dispersion or the spread of data. It's All you have to do to get the variance is just square the standard deviation. But most of the time, you'll see data written like this. It'll give you um, the variance written as the standard deviation squared. So if the variance is 5 squared, that means the standard deviation is just simply 5. Okay. <clears throat> so, for example, um, if, you, if you see this, this means that you have a set of data, so a set of data that is normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5, or if you wanted to describe the variance, the variance is the standard deviation squared, so 5 squared, which is 25. Okay? But when you're, when you're doing calculations based on normal distributions, you're always going to use the standard deviation. So um, it's more important to be able to pick up the standard deviation of this data is 5. So this data is normally distributed with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5. Now, what's going to be most important about a normal distribution? So if we have a history of the data, um, and we want to, um, we kind of want to use the graph um, to determine some properties about how the data is spread out. What we're going to be looking at is the area underneath the curve. The area under um, a normal curve always equals 1. So that represents 100% of the data. The area under the curve represents 100% of the data. What we're going to be looking at, um, the questions are going to be asking you, like, what percent of data have an x value less than this, or have an x value greater than such and such? Or what percent of the data is between these two x values? That's what we're going to be looking at. So for example, if I asked you if I labeled points A and B on this, um, on this normal distribution, also notice in the middle of the normal, dist normal distribution is always going to be your x bar. It's always going to be your mean right in the middle there. And um, each unit to the right and to the left, to the right is going to increase by one standard deviation each unit, and to the left is going to decrease by one standard deviation each unit. Okay. If I asked you to find what percent of data is between A and B, what you'd have to do is find the area of the curve between A and B. So to find that area, how we're going to do that, we're going to go back and look at this diagram. We're we'll using this diagram for all of the questions today. So in this diagram, it tells you the general properties of data that is normally distributed. Hopefully you remember <coughs> that within one standard deviation of the data, so between one standard deviation greater and one standard deviation less, you will have 68% of the data. So here's a nicely drawn example here. Percent of data between A and B, okay? All you would have to do is add up these two things here. We'd have 34% is between the, the mean and one standard deviation less, and 34% is between the mean and one standard deviation greater. 34 plus 34 gives us that 68% of data that is between um, the points A and B that I labeled here. Let's do another example. So once again, it tells you that the data forms a normal distribution with a mean of 50 and a standard deviation of 5. Okay, The 5 squared is the variance, but we're more interested in the standard deviation in this case. Okay. <clears throat> now, let me show you how you should um, label the x-axis. So we don't want to always just label it, you know, x bar and x bar plus one standard deviation and so on. Okay. We want to now we actually know what the mean is and we know what the standard deviation is, so we can label it more appropriately. The mean is always going to be in the middle. It's always going to be in the middle, and our mean in this case is 50. So I will label it 50. Now, one unit to the right is going to be one standard deviation greater than the mean. And in this case, our standard deviation is 5. So 5 greater than 50 is 55. Two units to the right of the mean is two standard deviations greater than the mean, so it'll be 60, and then 65. And then going to the left, we're going um, one standard deviation less than the mean, so 45, then two standard deviations less than the mean, 40, and then 35. So that's how I'd label the x-axis. 
Now, the question wants us to figure out, it wants us to draw a diagram that represents the percent of data that has these values for x. So what percent of data has an x value greater than 55? So I'll find 55 on my graph here. And for these questions, when we're just introducing the normal distribution, I'm always going to give you um, points that are exactly on these units of measurement that we've decided here. I'm not going to give you anything between um, one and two standard deviations greater than. I'm not going to ask you what percent of data is greater than 57. Um, we'll be doing that in the next lesson. For now, um, I'm going to give you points that are exactly you know one or two or three or standard deviations above or below the mean, and give you intervals like that so that we can use our diagram before I teach you. Um, the exact way of how to determine um, tomorrow when we actually learn what z-scores are and how to use those. But for today, we want to figure what percent of data has an x-value greater than 55. So what you have to do is, so here's 55. I want what percent of data has an x-value greater than 55. So I'd have to find the area under the curve to the right of 55. Okay, there's a couple ways we could do that. Probably the easiest way I could do that, instead of finding what's the area of the curve on this side, I know the area under the whole curve represents 100% of the data. So if I knew how much data it was to the left, I could just do 100% minus um, the percent of um, data that was less than 55. And that will give me the same answer. Okay. Um, in this case, because we're using rounded values, it'll actually get you a very slightly different answer. But for the purpose of these examples, we can do it either way. So let's see if you remember the properties from the diagram of the normal distribution. This is the one that's in your textbook. This is the most important one. This is the one that we're going to be using. Okay. So if you remember those properties, if we want to figure out what percent of data is greater than 55, we need the area under that curve, or 100% minus the area to the other side. Now, <clears throat> I'll do this part in blue. Based on normally distributed data, half of the data is to the left, half of the data is going to be the right, to the right of the mean. So I know to the left is going to be 50%, and then I know um, between the mean and one standard deviation greater than the mean is 34% of the data. So I know 84% of the data is going to be less than 55. So if I want to figure out what percent of the data is greater than 55, I just need to subtract 84% from 100. And what I end up getting is 16% of the data. That area under the curve there represents 16% of the data. So 16% of the data um, would have an x value greater than 55. And just here's another um, probably neater solution um, of me doing the exact same calculations. Okay, So if you want, just pause the video and take a look at what I've done there. Um, let's do another example now. What if I asked you what percent of data um, has an x value between 40 and 60? So x is greater than 40, but also less than 60. So what percent of data is between 40 and 60? Um, we're using the same set of data, so the data has a mean of 50, a standard deviation of 5. So I could fill out my um, x values at the bottom here, mean of 50, so put 50 in the middle. Standard deviation of 5, so go up by 5s when I go to the right, and down by 5s when I go to the left. If I want what percent of data is between 40 and 60, okay, so I want what percent of data is between 40 and 60, so I need the area between 40 and 60, and hopefully you notice 60 is two standard deviations greater than the mean, 40 is two standard deviations less than the mean. You know, there's one standard deviation, each interval is one standard deviation, okay? So two standard deviations greater than the mean, and two standard deviations less than the mean. So this is two standard deviations. Um, so there's x bar minus two standard deviations, and this distance here is x bar plus two standard deviations. Hopefully you remember from our diagram, within two standard deviations of the mean falls 95 percent of the data. So the area under this curve would be 0 0.95, which means 95 percent of the data is between 40 and 60. So here's a, here's a nicer looking solution of me doing the same thing. 95 percent of the data is within two standard deviations of the mean. Okay, 40 is two standard deviations less, 60 is two standard deviations greater, the area between those two is going to be 95 percent because that is a property of normal dis data that is normally distributed. Um, data that is normally distributed has 95% of its data being within two standard deviations of the mean. Let's do one more example here. 
Once again, my mean is 50, so I'll fill up my x values and my standard deviation is 5. This question is asking me what percent of data has an x value less than 40? So it's looking for the area under the curve to the left of 40. So what percent of data um, has an x value less than 40? So once again, there's a couple ways you can do this. We could figure out um, the area under the curve to the left. Once again, using this is the last time I'll scroll all the way back. Once again, using this diagram, or instead of finding out the area to the left, we could do 100% minus the area to the right. Two ways you could do it. Um, I'll show you both ways. So I'm just going to put up the solution for these, okay? So if I wanted to do um, figuring out the area to the left, if you remember back to our original diagram of the normally distributed data with all the percentages labeled, 2.25% of the data is between two standard deviations less and three standard deviations less than the mean. That's where this value here comes from. And then also hopefully you remember that 0.15% of the data is going to be less, it's going to be more than three standard deviations less than the mean. So 0.15 is going to be from here over. So that's where this value came from. So that means in total 2.4% of the data would be less than 40. Or, if you want to think of it the other way, if you want to think about finding the area to the right of 40 and then subtracting that from 100%, hopefully you remember, okay, 50% of the data is to the right of the mean. 34% is going to be one standard, between the mean and one standard deviation less than the mean. And 13.5% is going to be between one standard deviation less and two standard deviations less. So if you add all of those up, you get 97.5. And then if you subtract that from 100, you get 2.5. So the answers are slightly different. Because, once again, these values are rounded, but that's okay. Um, either answer would be acceptable in this instance. So 2.4% of the data would have an x value less than 40. We're going to do one last example. So Julie is an engineer who designs roller coasters. She wants to develop a ride that 95% of the population can ride. The average adult in North America has a mass of 71.8 kilograms. So right now, I, I saw the word average. Hopefully you remember average means the mean, so I'm going to write x bar there because x bar means the mean. And the, the average adult in North America has a standard deviation of 13.6, so I'm going to write my standard deviation symbol there. Let's describe this information in normal distribution notation. That's important to be able to do. Hopefully you remember normal distribution notation is x. So the data forms a normal distribution with a mean of 71.8 and a variance of 13.6 squared. Remember the variance is the standard deviation squared. So that's how you would write that notation. Um, and here's the answer to that written more nicely here. The next question says what range of masses should she be prepared to anticipate if she wants a ride that 95% um, of the population can ride? Well in this instance this question is just checking do you remember that 95% of data in data that is normally distributed Okay, will be within two standard deviations of the mean. So that means within two standard deviations greater and two standard deviations less than the mean. So to calculate that, well, our mean is 71.8. All we have to do is take our standard deviation um, and use that to calculate our range. Our range is going to be the mean plus or minus two standard deviations because 95% of the population will be within two standard deviations of the mean. And that's true for all data that's normally distributed. So the upper limit for our range is going to be two standard deviations greater than the mean. So take your mean and add two times the standard deviation, so two times 13.6, add that to 71.8, you get 99. To find the lower boundary for our range, subtract two standard deviations from the mean, you get 44.6. So 99 point, or sorry, 95% of the population um, would have a mass between 44.6 and 99 kilograms. Part C says if she wanted to provide uh, if she wanted to provide for 99.7% of the general population, what range of masses should she anticipate? Once again, it's just checking, do you remember, um, um, what does this 99.7% mean? Um, so basically, hopefully you remember that 99.7% of a set of data okay, is going to be within three standard deviations of the mean if it is normally distributed. So within three standard deviations, to calculate that, <clears throat> You just have to, to calculate your range, you would just take the mean and do plus or minus three standard deviations. Add three standard deviations to get your upper limit, 
subtract three standard deviations to get your lower limit, and the range between 31 and 112.6 is going to tell you where 99.7% of um, North American adults are going to, where they're, how much they're going to weigh is going to fall between. Okay, So 99.7% of North American adults will weigh between 31 and 112.6 kilograms. So only 0.3% of Americans are going to fall outside of that range. <clears throat> and part D just says, what assumptions is Julie making in this example that could cause problems? There's always going to be problems in any type of um, real-life application question that you do that you're going to have to consider. So once again, she only looked at adults, so she didn't include children. And I'm sure a lot of people they are going to want to use the ride are going to be children. Um, she didn't consider the difference, differences between males and females. Um, and one key um, problem that we did here, we assumed that the data of the masses follows a normal distribution. Okay, We don't know for sure, but we assumed that in order to um, do our calculations. And she only looked at people in North America. Okay, So those are some problems with it. So what I want you to take away from this lesson, just the main thing, um, area under the curve of a normal distribution um, shows you the percent of data that lies between. So if I give you intervals and I ask you to find the area between those intervals, that tells you what percent of the data is between those intervals. And the area under a curve um, represents 100% of the data. Next most important thing, you have to remember this diagram. You have to know that 68% of data is within one standard deviation of the mean, 95 is within two, 99.7 within three, and you have to understand what um, normal distribution notation looks like. You have to know that this number that is in this place is going to be the mean, this number in this place is going to be the standard deviation squared, which is known as the variance. Okay. If you have any questions, let me know. And you can get the worksheet from jensenmath.ca, try it out. Um, and the answers will be attached to it.